So I'm Gerber Daumann. I live in Robertsville, have been living in Robertsville for over 20 years now. I do work in Indianapolis and I'm a professor of German and French and uh, the assistant dean of interdisciplinary studies. Um, I've been painting for the past 20 years now. Uh, there's a little story behind it. My daughter at some point gave me a canvas and said, Mom, why don't you paint? And that canvas sat in my office for over two years. And at some point she inquired and asked me, well, have you painted yet? And I said, I don't have the time to do that. But she said, well, Mom, I know you. I said, oh. And she said, well, you know, if you don't like what you produce, you can always paint over it. Mm -hmm. And that was the very day I started. I, uh, my first piece was a flower vase, which I will never give away, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, then, slowly but surely, um, I painted more and more and more and more, and I fell into, so to speak, into faces. And I've been doing faces ever since. Okay. And mostly women's faces. Um, at this point in time, I feel it has become a mission to tell women's stories through abstract art. Uh, I have nobody in particular in mind when I paint, but um, I don't know, there's always a different kind of expressivity to the faces, even though they have a lot in common. People tell me uh, they're all drawn to the eyes when they look at me. Mm -hmm. uh, I love vivid colors, uh, black and white is just not my thing, and I think I do best when I have a big canvas. So I tried out various sizes, but big canvases are absolutely my thing. <laughs>
<laughs> what? Well, you know, it's that's that's what it is. Uh, I uh, should mention though, um, uh, Mora Becker, uh, she is a German female painter, and she lives or grew up close to where I am originally from, and there is a museum uh, in Volkswede where her work can be seen. Just remember now, I, I did a lot of pieces in her style uh, via uh, Batik. I just remember I had that face as well. Uh, also for my mother, who was the art lover in the family. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, retell that story. So I think what you have in mind is the woman who is dressed in very fancy clothing but has scars and band-aids. Is that mm -hmm. the painting you're talking about? Okay, so it's one of my big pieces and it's very, very colorful. The eyes are extremely sad uh, in that piece. And this is the background story. So every spring I teach a course working with younger and older Americans. And I go out with my students into uh, the inner city and we work with organizations that cater to ages across the spectrum, um, quote unquote, normal situations. So my students encounter normal situations, but they also encounter very difficult situations where kids have been abandoned or have not the best home life and have, get to, have gotten to see what drug abuse and other kinds of abuses can lead to. So uh, after one of these spring term courses, I decided to quote unquote paint one of the women I had seen who um, dropped off her child at a daycare center in the morning and her face was completely bruised, but she was dressed to the teeth. And what you see in this painting is obviously uh, not the bruises, but um, allusions to those bruises and cuts, uh, which I've covered up via painting, uh, via my painting with band-aids. And I put her into these beautiful gown with uh, ruffles and so on. So I wanted to show the discrepancy of what we let society see about ourselves and what we try to hide. Hmm. Acrylics, 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 and charcoal. So I most of the time feel the need to delineate part of the features that I give these women, not always, um, I also do abstract paintings, but mostly women's faces. Um, I use very high quality uh, acrylic colors and canvases. Um, that's it. And uh, as I already said, um, the bigger the better for me. Yeah, very big paintbrushes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yes. Mm -hmm. I see. What else is? Oops, that, that is a loaded question. Um, your, your paintings are pretty loaded with, with some of the messages. For they sure. are loaded, that's true. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think, first of all, uh, I'm just one of many artists. So I know my place, so to speak. Um, pe some people like realist art, other people like abstract art, yet other people like something in between. And it's all good. So I'm not somebody who would ever say, well, you know, my way or the highway. That's that's definitely not me. Um, I don't know. It is. It simply is what it is. I am driven, obviously, by vivid colors and by the intersections of uh, social justice and beauty. I think I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> Obviously, uh, given my very demanding work schedule, 
my hobbies have changed over the course of the years. So painting for me, first of all, is not a hobby anymore. It's, it's a second profession, mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't feel like work. Uh, I, I think whenever we are passionate about something, whatever it is, work is not necessarily work in terms of being burdensome or taking away from uh, our living experience or experiences the way we would like to see them on a day-to-day -day basis. However, there are only so many hours in a day. So if I get a chance, I paint. Uh, of course, I love my family. And um, now that the kids are out of the house, I have four children. Um, my husband and I uh, are concentrating on each other much more than we have been able in the past 20 some years. And both of us just love music and movies and good food well, and dogs, dogs. <laughs> and a big garden uh, and being with friends. So I love to read, um, but I have to say, and it's sort of strange because I'm a professor of literature, if I get the choice these days and if I were hard pressed, do I want to read or do I want to paint? I would say I would go for painting, but would have somebody read to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, I, I've been guilty of listening to audiobooks. Well. Yes, 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 yes. It's it's wonderful to you know whatever it is. Um, and my husband and I have decided to get more and more uh, into the habit of reading to each other. So we'll see how that goes. So my husband um, is the love of my life. He is uh, American and as I said already, we met when he was an exchange student in Germany. Um, well, Paul is, Paul is a polyglot. He is the brain in the family, I would say. There's no doubt about it. Um, interested in everything with a depth that is that I haven't seen in other people very very often so um, and he has a sure bad judgment uh, sometimes it takes me a while to catch up he's already there when he has made a decision and I'm still following the and processing <clears throat> how he got to that point um, he's very kind um, cheers me up a lot um, and, and just very supportive, has always been very supportive of my art. He does most of the framing, I shouldn't think of that, that is difficult <clears throat> and time consuming work, particularly when I get into a self-critical mode and I look at a painting in a frame and I'm thinking, mm, that frame absolutely doesn't do the painting justice. Paul, could you pretty please <laughs> use the other frame we have in the basement and give it a try? Paul will do so, and then I might say, no, let's go back to the first one. <laughs> so, very, very patient, uh, definitely has interests of his own, is politically very uh, engaged in terms of commenting on current and past events as well. So. Okay, awesome. Maybe not so much necessarily just about me, but about the arts. So I have been thinking, obviously, for a long time, why is it that people have a hard time very often to appreciate art or take it for granted or are not willing to pay a price for pieces of art that they would easily, you know, fork over for a basketball game or a football game. There's this discrepancy for me that I'm still wrestling with. Um, and for me, it's rarely in life an either or, but a this and that as well. And so I would just uh, want people to think a little bit more about what it means to have art in your house. Why would you have art in your house, right? First of all, you invite somebody else into your house. That is a big step. And you look at this piece of art, hopefully often, whether it's a sculpture or a painting or jewelry or whatever it is, 
Um, so you are in connection with the ideas and spirit of, of somebody else. Um, and you have this piece of art for a long, 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 long time, 20, 30, 40 years. And you might even pass it on to your family, friends. Um, and so it's an investment that stays with you, uh, hopefully makes you enjoy it for what it is, but also challenges you, makes you think about things, uh, has something new to tell you on a daily basis. And then I'm coming back to the price or the, the actual step to purchasing a piece of art. Um, so if I look at it's a crazy example, but I'll mention it anyway. So I have a crown for which I paid $525. And that crown probably lasts me 20 to 25 years. I, there was no question for me that I would pay that price. So why would I not pay $500? I'm just making up this figure now for a piece of art that would last me 25 to 30 years. If I really enjoyed it. So that's still my, my big question. Um, I think in the end you can only lay out what you're thinking about as an artist in this particular area when it comes to trading or selling pieces because in a way they're all children to us. Mm -hmm. All our pieces are children to us um, and we let go of them and hope that they will bring joy or challenge to somebody else. And uh, I think a, so a society as a whole is much better off if people invite art into their house and um, reflect about what they, what they see because in a, in a way it's a mirror we are holding up to each other um, with art, whether it's realist art or surrealist art or you name it, but it's this taking this additional step of stepping out of your day-to-day -day life and taking a break and being reminded of um, beauty, of challenges, of uh, a different way of speaking with and to each other because art is a language for me and a multifaceted language. So I think I'm going to leave it at that.